This matchup is really fun. <laughs> and I like seeing it. I think that drill can be unsafe on Hugo. You gotta be really careful with it. It's hard to have a safe one against characters with really fast normals. That's not true, it's generally easy to make it safe. Mm, that was a good catch. Oh, this matchup is like, it's classic. This matchup isn't like most Street Fighter 3 matchups. A lot of people bitch about Street Fighter 3 endorsing one style of play, and they're right. I mean, I really do like that one style of play that Rushdown makes up. It's different. Every character has a different, like, approach against each other. It's just more subtle because everything is close range. It's just there's different degrees of close. Everyone plays between point blank and, like, quarter screen. But they're still zoning. It's just the zoning happens within that point blank to quarter screen. But this is a matchup where they actually use the entire fucking screen. Which is kind of novel. I think I mostly like it because it is novel. Ooh. He had no good way to do anything out of that jump. Necro isn't like Dalsum where he can just do an instant air teleport or anything like that. He had to drill to make it safe or just be really easy to anti-air. Necro's very floaty jump is good and bad for him. Ooh. I think he could have gotten a clap punish there, but who would be ready for that? An uppercut that only gets one hit. Mallet Smash is very reactable in this game, but it's still fast enough that you can potentially interrupt something the opponent is doing. But it's very slow, you can just parry it. It's not that hard of a reaction. Wow. Stand strong, stand strong, jump strong. Wow, the reads. This Hugo is really aggressive with them. He's making a lot of really big predictions. You don't normally see, like, this aggressive play in Street Fighter 3. Normally you see it kind of spaced out between parries and defense. You still see the same, like, like rush down, like mix-ups, the reads. But, um... You don't normally see, like, like offense that's not supplemented by parries. That's unthrowable. He was doing that normal specifically to bait that. The special taunt with Hugo is just up plus taunt. It does the same thing as a normal taunt. It increases his defense. All that happens is poison comes out and taunts too. Damn, three traditional zoning matches in a row. A lot of would-be offensive characters turn into zoning characters against Hugo. Or is a good example of that too. This is what Remy actually does in every matchup though. So him, it being particularly effective, really just gives Remy one of his only edge matchups. I would say Remy absolutely wins this one. Maybe not the very highest level of play. Probably still at the very highest level of play. Hugo's usual ways of dealing with this problem, problem matchups don't really work in this matchup too. Usually he just gets in and then relies on like a good read on what he needs to parry. But here he needs good read. I shouldn't say he needs good reads, but he needs a slow approach and good movement, which he normally doesn't need in other matchups. I mean, he does need good movement. Everyone needs good movement all the time. But good movement against fireballs is very different against compared to good movement against other shit. Ooh, the universal overhead whiff into super. That's a classic in this game. It's like whiffing Geef Stand Roundhouse into super, basically. It 
Except it's harder to get counter hit out of the universal overhead, and it's actually a little bit faster. So it's better. This is one of them stressful matchups where, like, Remy theoretically wins, but he has to play perfect. And things can just go to shit really quickly. I kind of love matchups like this, but also kind of hate them. Whoa, that was a bad sweep. Sweep in this game isn't like I'll sweep in Street Fighter 4. You can just, like, low parry the second one. It's not even a red parry, it's blue. It's, like, not very hard to do on reaction. That's a difficult-ish parry. He really should be running Super 1. You can still anti with Super 1, and honestly, it does about the same damage, except it's safe if parried. Whereas if your Super 2 is parried, you're pretty much dead. If I were him, I'd be looking for, like, anti-air and super, like now, yeah. More Remy zoning. Remy is this really weird, awkward thing between rushdown and zoning. It's not that he's rushed down in any way, it's just that this game's engine sufficiently rewards rushdown that Remy, like, can play it well. The problem is that there's no synergy between Remy's two styles of play. Oh, why did he not do the flash kick? Went for the Light of Virtue instead, that was weird. There's no clear distinction of when Remy should stop doing one and do the other. So it always seems really random. It's like Remy will be doing a good job zoning and then all of a sudden he rushes in. Or Remy will be doing a good job fucking rushing in and all of a sudden he'll start throwing fireballs. Oof. See, like, even even though Remy's, like, Remy's Oki is good enough that he can push a wake-up mix-up. It didn't work for him that time. But it's not a bad idea for Remy to push Oki's Emma. Wow, that sweep is bad. It's like Remy's character doesn't quite work in the engine, and it wasn't well adapted to it. The entire, the big problem with Remy, I would say, that really prevents him from being, like, a high-tier character is every single light of virtue you throw doesn't build you any meter. You don't get meter for throwing a fireball, only getting the opponent to block a fireball. And every single fucking light of virtue the opponent parries, um, they get meter. Remy's fundamental gameplay... Oh, he's so toast, dude. Yeah. Remy's fundamental gameplay um, rewards the opponent. Akagaeru. I really like watching this guy play. Oh, why jump forward? Oddly pick normal. Alex does not have a cross up in this game. Jump short does nothing. Alex might have a cross up. He might have one of them really bad ones that usually doesn't work. Like his jump fierce might sometimes cross up. Or even his jump short. I wouldn't be that surprised. But if it works, then it's like a like a like a pixel perfect kind of work, or like only tall characters or something like that. <laughs> oh, he's trying to preempt them. Most characters are really good at anti-airing forward jumps with neutral jumps, but that didn't work for him. Alex is really cool. Street Fighter V has made me, like, realize how much I like Alex's design. Not just his visual design, but, like, his gameplay design, too. A poke-oriented grappler is a really neat thing. I feel like Street Fighter V kind of lost a little bit of that. Or rather, I feel like the things he's good at don't work so well in the engine. And other things that he wasn't good at before, like grappling, are suddenly better in the engine. So even though he has all the same tools, his game plan is slightly different. 
I feel like Birdie is a more... Birdie's like as much of an Alex as Alex is in Street Fighter V. Birdie plays more like Alex did than current Alex does. That's how I feel. Although I still like the Street Fighter V version of Alex quite a lot. Astroth is the guy with the axe, right? I remember him. Oh, that follow-up. Why do you do that? That was weird. He tried to do the double jet upper. That, like, you never do that follow-up unless you're doing for Dizzy. Because it's like, it does half the opponent's Dizzy bar and it doesn't, it's like harder. It's harder and metered compared to his other follow-ups. And also I think it doesn't do as much damage, but it does a fuck ton of Dizzy. Nice confirm. It's kind of questionable to spend meter at this stage in the fight, but then again, Dudley's Oki is really killer. And he doesn't really mind losing a bar that much. Huh. That was a reversal headbutt. Good reaction on Dudley for not supering there, because Yurian could have parried it. He went for the upper again. It wasn't the X that time, but it didn't matter what he did that time. But still a really weird follow-up. Studley has a odd style. I've never seen him before. I might have seen him a couple times. Username said Tori, I think. Oh yeah, it might actually be better with double with Super 1. Jet Upper is an ender into Super 3, loses a bunch of hits, but with Super 1 you still get the full connect. I never thought about that. It's kind of irrelevant though because he's not using it. That's a really decent anti-air. Really decent. That's a really good anti-air. It is Tori. At least pressure is very overwhelming. Um, Ibuki looks really neat and different. She looks a little bit more like her Street Fighter 3 self, but she also looks mostly like a new character, which I really appreciate. It's like spiritually they've kept a lot of things that Ibuki had. They've changed her moveset up a lot though. Third Strike Ibuki to Street Fighter 5 Ibuki looks like uh, Juni to DiCaprio. It looks like they had this idea, but they were kind of cool with changing a bunch of things about it. And I really like that. Interesting. Nice parry! Nice parry and nice punish. He had a good read and a good punish combo. Got hit out of a jump. Who does wake up jump? Against Dudley. I really like this matchup. He did low forward. He probably already did low forward before the uh, super, but uh, it's actually fairly easy to hit Dudley out of his super 3 with lows. Mapo Tofu. I think it's actually Mapo Tofu. Ugh. Trying to go for that chip. Or something. I don't know. That wouldn't have chipped him out. He always does that upper ender. Is that just his style? You never see that ender most of the time. <laughs> he did this ducking straight into super. That's an empty cancel probably. That was the start of his, he messed it up a little bit. That was the start of Dudley's highest damage mid screen combo. Bow and Poe are nearly identical. Oh, that dash true. What the... that was... why was that his punish? I assume he wanted a super somewhere in there.
I like removing the fluff from Mabuki's move set. She only needs one move. She only needs one special move to end a combo. I think Ibuki had more fluff than almost any Street Fighter character. I really like that they killed not one but several special moves. Is Ibuki's overhead really negative on block? That's disgusting. It's like a fucking 30 frame overhead. Yeah, that makes sense. In my opinion, Ibuki's overhead should be like plus, and the emphasis should be just interrupting it. Because you can just jab it if you're watching for it. Even if you're not expecting it, it's fairly easy to interrupt. This is like unwinnable tier. He needed like a super and two, two hard SPDs to win that. Ooh. This matchup is also cool. I was noticing recently that even though Dudley is usually regarded to be the top five characters in the game, um, there aren't that many Dudley players. You think there'd be a whole lot, considering the number of Kens and Chun Li's and Yuns and Makoto's. Dudley's always been a little bit rare compared to all of them. Like there are more Yurian players, there are more Ryu players than there are Dudleys. That might not be true. Nice. Dudley has so many reaction link dis links into super. What the fuck were they thinking with Dudley? Let's give him a fucking 2 frame super, a 3 frame super, and a 2 frame super. Uh, Stan Strong could have been... No. Uh, the only ways he could combo out of that were either required charge or wasted wasted meter. I take it back. Oof. Huh. What'd he do? That could have been a huge punish. That was nice. He did. He got the back fierce, and he did the cancel the fireball. But he reacted that it was an airborne opponent. <laughs> That's gonna hit. Dud I mean, Chun Li. She didn't have the invincibility to blow through his. Dudley's super, super three has a decent amount. Dudley can just get several towards medium kicks in a row. They're not a combo, but just like it's really scary to hit forward in that kind of pressure because you could get thrown at any time. And anyone that's successful, he can link super. It's quite strong. He can also do one and then do like low short, low short into super. So it's really difficult to do anything except hold down back. And if you're holding down back, nice, that's the optimal under against Hugo, I think. Um, if you're holding down back, then. Um, he can just do it another towards medium kick. Dudley is balanced as hell. I disagree. Dudley is extremely strong. There are a few other characters who are even stronger. If I were going to rebalance this game, I would make Dudley and Akuma the characters to shoot for. I think they're right around the level that I want to, that I think every character should be at. Anyone above them will get nerfed, anyone below them will get buffed. We're literally watching a matchup that Dudley supposedly wins 8-2. That's not balanced. Nice. 
I just like their power level. Although Dudley and Akuma are strong, nothing they have feels particularly cheap. It's like every character that's better than them has something that's, like, questionably really broken. Like Chun-Li's ability to just take a frame of super off of nothing and that really broken fucking mix-up between that and throw. Like Makoto's touch of Dizzy's, like, Yun's ability to just turn out fucking supers like nothing. A lot of Hugos have been playing for a long time trying to fucking make that matchup work. That was one of the best Hugos. Um, that's a really weird opinion, but also I don't think it's that objectionable. That's probably true, yeah. Akuma's better, but Ryu has a better chance of winning. That sounds like a contradiction, but that's really how it feels. Wow! Why'd that work? <laughs> tricky, tricky. I've never seen that closer. I've theorized it, but I've never seen it. Jab, jab KKZ reset is basically, you gotta think about it like a really, really high damage combo. I would say that probably KK, I, f I feel like his jumping combo, the, the touch of Dizzy he can get off that is probably too good. I would say that combo, probably off of a jump in, should do somewhere in the realm of, um, 70%. So the idea of it being a touch of death on some characters is um, strong. But he is burning both his bars and it is a hard combo. So I'm okay if it does like 70, 70 or 80%. Oof. That super knockdown, uh, even though it got like no damage, it prevented the quick stand. Oof. Nice. Ducking can be done on reaction to any fireball to super cancel. I shouldn't say any, because it depends on the range. That was too far for him to duck. I like that a lot. He just supered the booger. He's like, eh, fuck that. He should do it again, honestly. Yeah, he should have supered that. He absolutely should have supered that. It's really hard for Aura to get a combo off of uh, anti, anti super booger. The least super destroys hits the booger, so he only gets hit by one, which means you can't get cross up unblockables on him. It's usually pretty good for Dudley to use one of his bars to nullify one of Oros, because the alternative is Dudley having to deal with a mix-up that can potentially be an unblockable, and also potentially instantly kill him. Additionally, if Oro tries to file, follow the booger in, um, and Dudley supers it, it's very difficult. Oro has to hang from really far away. That's an odd activation. I right, made it work. Or has to hang really far away to get the super Dudley super to not hit at all, and then he has a hard time comboing off of his one hit of booger. Or uh, if Oro gets close enough to block the super, he actually I think he's like minus. Like Dudley gets hit out of his super, and Oro stone blocks done from the super while Dudley like traded his way out of it. I mean that's kind of questionable. I feel like Hugo, I mean, not Hugo, Akuma. I feel like if Akuma drops a combo against me as Oro, like, I just win. I mean, it depends on the combo. If it's like a juggle, it's not that bad. Oh, it didn't work. Sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes the stones fail to reach the opponent in time. I don't quite understand the mechanism of why it works and why it doesn't. I think it depends on the height of the crutch hard punch. And, um... Maybe what what size the front stone is. Or has a few combos where uh, how well they work is based on whether he's got a big or a small front stone. It's like a half and half chance that you're going to get a big stone in the front. Nice anti-air. Very reliable anti-air that. Anti-air OS parry into normal.
very difficult to do something about that. I would say Denjin is... Um, I would say all of Ryu Supers are competitive. The fact that Denjin is basically a true mix-up at the highest level, even at the highest level of play, is kind of okay because of what he sacrifices in terms of EX moves and, and juggles. I feel like Ryu, they really got Ryu Supers right. I feel like all of Ryu Supers are extremely viable. The only complaint I have is that Shin Shoryu probably costs a bit more meter than I would make it cost. I would make it like almost the full length, but not quite. I really like that Super 2 is only one bar. And that um, his EX is so good. Ryu's EX is fucking phenomenal. EX Tatsu is pretty nice. EX Air Tatsu is pretty nice. EX Donkey Kick is fucking one of the best EX moves in the game. EX Uppercut is a true reversal. EX Fireball commands footsies. Ryu's got like an amazing selection of EX moves. She got the quick stand. It's kind of difficult. The super in interrupts the quick stand timing. The skills, I think. Stay around house. Max meter build. I feel like Aegis is fair as fuck. As someone who's been playing against Yurian for a very long time. Nice. Very nice. Very, very nice. It's a good conversion. Should have done the instant overhead. That was it. If he did the Kroto setup, he would have won. I would have won that round. If I took the, st if I took the stick from him right at the end, I'd have been like, got this. And I would have won. Every single Ryu Super has a different goal in mind. And they affect the way he plays even when he doesn't. Like, every single combo Ryu does is different. Based on which kind of Super, which super he picked. I feel like that's a fantastic... Fantastic thing. Ooh, he got a big charge. I don't know about one of the best in the game, but it would certainly be good. It's hard to imagine a super better than Aegis. It's hard to imagine a Yurian's like a way that the super one or super two for Yurian could possibly be competitive with Aegis, because Aegis does everything. But I do think that um, Yurian super one is already one of the better supers in the game. The problem with Yurian is he has a hard time launching without like his unblockable setups or his mirror to make safe pressure or whatnot. Yurian basically needs he's not like Aura where he can just do like his launcher safely. He needs like a parry or some setup. Crutch Fierce is pretty slow and uh unsafe. That was nice. That's how you handled engine. So even if he got better juggles with Super One like, he still doesn't easily land those juggles. That's the problem. The problem is that his other two supers help him... His Aegis helps him in footsies, whereas his other two supers don't. So his other two supers will need to be really good. They would need to make it some way that, like... They would need to do something to help them to make those supers help you in footsies, which is hard to imagine. If Yurian's chariot tackle was safe and he could hit confirm it on reaction into a super one, then I think that would help super one a lot. But that's already a huge like.
Yeah, it burns a bar and it requires basically like good presence of mind or even adequate setup. Blue Eyes White Privilege? That's a fucking sick name. That's one of the best Twitch usernames I've ever seen. Kuni is a very good Ryu. Dude, if C for 1 punished fireballs from full screen, I mean, that would be neat. Being able to punish fireballs is not a very big deal in this game. I bet you a nickel that Yurim will have Cherry Attack as a super in Street Fighter V and that it'll go through fireballs. I'm willing to put down a nickel for that. I'm willing to bet like $100 they do that. It's just, like, fundamentally, like, going through fireballs is not something you need to do. Wow. That's technically safe. It's not, but it is. Nice. Got the low forward off. Oh my god! Close hard punch has a pretty good hitbox, doesn't it? I'm willing to bet that at least for one of those, he was churning out a super. Or not a super, but like an uppercut and an EX fireball or something like that in case of parry. Ryu. This guy is a veteran Ryu. And a good Yurian on the side. Yurian is weak to zoning. Like, I'll, I'll give you that. C for 1 actually punishes there. That's kind of neat. A lot of characters have um, a super that they don't normally pick that's suddenly kind of good against Denjin Ryu. Because it just like goes through his fireball. Chariot tackle super would be a great example of that. Tyrant slaughter, whatever. Is like normally um, normally dungeon is a true mix up, but if you could just dodge it with a super, that'd be great. Well, I could have backed Ash. Who really does wake up back, Ash? Oh, I slept so long, and yet I'm still yawning. Nice dash. It's difficult to be brave enough to hit buttons there the mirror sitting in front of you. That'll hit you out of any attack you do. I shouldn't say any. Nice. Got the 50-50 right. The EX mirror for maximum safety. He just needs to win in footsies at this point. Thanks, Volcane. I expect they're going to get even better, though. Nice, 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 nice. Just come back as possible. <gasps> that cross through! And the universal overhead. How the fuck was Ru ready for that? He must have known that was the setup. Kuni tried to get out of the way, but uh, Ru wisely backed up to move the screen backwards. So that um, the furthest Ru could get away was still in the mirror. Ru was forced to parry there. I mean, Kuni was forced to parry there. Dude, who would be ready to fucking block down forward? That was a really good block. Kirky, wake up. I agree. Maybe not multiple V triggers, but I'm down with multiple V skills and I'm down with multiple CAs. Man, maybe I am down with multiple V triggers. Shit, and like the more I think about that, the more it becomes a really good idea. I feel like a V trigger would be an easier thing to change. Because a V trigger is like very. 
there are a lot of different ways to do it. Shit, the more I think about that, the more I think it's a really good idea. I've been talking about like another CA all this time, but another V-Trigger is a way better idea. A V-Trigger that patches up different elements of your game or has a different length or something like that. Every character having two V-Triggers would be great. Oh, Kirky's awake. A V-meter is super. Um, that's a good idea. Like, 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 the way that Vegas V-Trigger works, for example. What if every character had an install that they could use, or like a super that they could use? So, like, everyone had a V-Trigger in the style of Vegas, and everyone had a V-Trigger in the style of Ryu's. And you could choose which one you wanted to do. That'd be a really cool idea. Nice escape. That's a reasonably difficult parry. It's actually not a very hard parry at all. It's just you don't know what you're going to be parrying. And the most important thing for a parry is knowing what you're going to be parrying. So it's insanely difficult, but, like, the parry itself isn't very hard. Very good parry. It was really bad. It was a really big mistake on Rue's part to do the crutch fierce. He didn't realize that he was going to be parried, so he like didn't react with some anti-parry stuff. Crutch fierce was a super committal move that carried no mix-up whatsoever. He had to do something either high parry only or low parry only. V reversal is invincible. It's just not invincible to throws. It's admissible to hit sand projectiles. Not only that, but even if you V reversal like whiffs or is like fucking, I don't know, doesn't hit for whatever reason, uh, you're still invincible until, until it wears off and then you go straight to blocking. <laughs> Shame that. I didn't know Makoto would be able to dash out. Or I would have been able to. I can say that for certainty. I feel like Goose Reversal, V Reversal is actually really bad, but it works decently with his character. Or rather, if other characters had his V Reversal, they would be shitty. But Geef isn't that shitty. Because he doesn't really mind leaving the opponent standing or doing less damage. Chun-Li and Ken basically have the same V reversal Geef has, but they don't have like invincible they don't have like command grabs or anything. Thanks. I found that to be pretty useful when I was playing Alex. I like kept on doing stain fierce and it kept whiffing and I was like, this is bullshit. I went to training mode, tried to find a normal that would work there, and I found one. It's a convert that I think most people wouldn't think of. And I do think it helps. Learned katakana today. Matsushi, close but not. It is a chi side zoo. It is not pronounced. It is machi. Katakana is quite easy to learn. There's 46 characters. No, you got it. It is a two. Uh, Super 1... A lot of people ask that. Super 1 basically kills Akuma once you land it. A combo into and out of Super 1... Or I should say into. A combo into Super 1 does about 80% of Akuma's health. Considering you can land Super 1 much more easily than Super 2, that's usually, like, um, better. No, um, I like bad matchups too, honestly. 
I feel like that's something that has been getting less and less of a common sentiment, but it used to be quite common. You used to see people saying shit like that all the time, but there's like a new generation of people who hate that idea. You used to see Street Fighter 2 players who'd be like, I really like Guile versus Dalsim. But nowadays people never say shit like that. Toguro got fucked. Anora. No, Mister. Oh, you have to be a, you have to do a very specific walk in to make that combo work. Mister just dropped it. I do like fighting Sim. Sim is a very unique experience. Oof. Parry? Nope. You can parry after the super freeze there, but it's a little bit precise depending on how close you are to Makoto. That he probably had about like two or three frames to get it there. Tricky, tricky. Messer is a very good player. <laughs> very nice. The thing about Makoto Super 2 in this game is that it actually still loses to Medes. It's the same as it is in Street Fighter 4 now. She just gets hit on the way up to the corner. She doesn't burn bar, though. She only burns bar if she gets the super freeze. But it's not invincible or anything. Makoto. That happens with Makoto sometimes. Hmm, a pink Makoto who kicks ass. Who could it be? It's actually not that common of a color from Makoto. I can only think of Jasmine who used it as his main color. And maybe Momochi? I don't remember which color Momochi used. It's more likely that you're just seeing a whole lot of fucking Tominaga footage. Because Tominaga is at the end of like every one of these videos. Mimora uses the black one, I think. Kamora too strong. Give me